Sideline Dissident Podcast coming to you from YouTube and iTunes. Follow me on Twitter at the Brad Whitaker. I am the Brad Whitaker. Got a good one for you today. Lots to talk about. I'm going to be previewing the NFC Championship game. Packers, Falcons, two high-powered offenses going up against each other. Should be fun. I'll give you my preview and prediction. I'm also going to talk about the 49ers head coaching job. It looks like we have a pretty good idea who they're next head coach is going to be hopefully he lasts a little bit longer than the last uh two head coaches and if he does well hopefully he's not going to be run out of town like jim harbaugh was but i'll talk to you about who that candidate is it's the last head coaching vacancy uh but first i'm going to be talking about the dallas cowboys what are they going to do this offseason it's fascinating topic uh, look, we know Tony Romo is going to get traded. Let me just put that out there. Uh, I don't. There's not a controversy. There wasn't a controversy all season. We knew who the best starting quarterback was. Uh, not saying uh, Romo's not a great quarterback. He's done a lot throughout his career. Uh, but Dak was just a better fit. He had Zeke and that old line and the mobility of Prescott, and he limits his mistakes, doesn't turn over the ball much. Uh, Not the strongest arm in the world, uh, but he's great at making short passes. He's great at executing plays. Dak Prescott's the guy. We know he's going to be their quarterback. And this idea, I understand the argument of having a great backup on your team. Oftentimes... Uh, At least on half the teams in the NFL every year, the starting quarterback goes down. So prioritizing your backup quarterback position is important. But you also need to prioritize other parts of the team. And Tony Romo chews up too much of the salary cap. He's a $20-plus million cap hit, and you're paying nothing for Dak Prescott. At some point, the, the Cowboys will have to fork over their money and pay for Prescott, but He's a rookie, or he's going into his second season. They have a little while before they have to do that. Meaning, it's time the Cowboys prioritize their defense a little bit more. Now, we all know that right now in the NFL, particularly this season, it's an offensive-oriented league, and the offensive line is clearly the most important unit on the field uh, if you take out the quarterback, but your quarterback can't do anything unless you have a good O-line. Uh... But Dallas doesn't need to improve their O-line. We know they're the best in the game. Uh, although you could argue Tennessee's O-line is just as good. Uh, I still think Dallas, with the experience, they're, they're significantly better. And uh, I, I was, when I was doing research on this, I, I stumbled across a number of stories saying the Cowboys need to improve at the wide receiver position. They don't have enough depth. As if Beasley and Williams and Des Bryant and Witten isn't good enough. Look, teams that prioritize the wide receiver position do not do very well in the NFL. All right, the LA Rams gave Tavon Austin a massive contract uh, before the start of the regular season. How did that work out for them? They have holes everywhere else, and we know Dallas didn't lose the game to Green Bay. Because of their offense. They lost because of their defense. They'll need the money to bring in some defensive talent. And their safety, Barry Church, cornerback Brandon Carr, and other cornerback Morris Claiborne, they're all due to be free agents. And understanding the NFL, you're not going to bring all of them back. I'm sure the Cowboys will prioritize re-signing Church and Claiborne, but you're going to need that money from somewhere. They have some cap space already, But trade Tony Romo, you get some more cap space back, and you could even bring in some defensive talent. The issue with Dallas is they need a pass rush. That's been their biggest weakness all season long. And Demarcus Lawrence, Randy Gregory, Malik Collins, they can't pick up all the slack for Dallas. Now, uh, you could pick up some free agents. The linebacker, uh, uh, Melvin Ingram, he'll be available Jason Pierre-Paul, he's another possibility. We know Dallas likes to sign the flashy players. uh, But those positions, defensive tackle, linebacker, are really positions you need to draft. The NFL's not getting older. They're getting younger. They're getting faster. I wouldn't be surprised if the Cowboys used their draft to prioritize their defensive line and their linebackers. 
Uh, and Dallas can certainly get some defensive talent in return for Tony Romo. We don't know where Romo could go. Uh, Denver's a possibility. Arizona is another possibility in the New York Jets. Plenty of teams need quarterbacks. Uh, the LA Rams. It could be another team I haven't listed here. But here's something that I think the Cowboys should do that is probably unpopular among most Cowboys fans. Dallas doesn't need to improve at receiver, and I've always said that position is valued way too much, and teams can take advantage of general managers or owners or head coaches that really, really fall in love with wide receivers. And we found out this season, I mean, it got better toward the final weeks of the year, but we found out this season that Dak Prescott and Des Bryant don't exactly work well together. They don't work terribly, but certainly not to the same extent Tony Romo worked with Des Bryant. Some general manager will bite if the Cowboys want to trade Des Bryant. There's some general manager, Ryan Gergson, somebody that might bite in a Cowboys trade of Des Bryant. And what can you get in return? Well, you can beef up that defense, you could get some draft picks, Maybe an early first rounder. The Cowboys are going to be drafting late in the first round. Get yourself a great linebacker. Get yourself a great defensive tackle. That's what Dallas needs to do. Look, they can give up some pieces at receiver. They really can. The New England Patriots, they get their receivers from undrafted free agents every year. And then, of course, it's like, how did the Patriots, how did Bill Belichick find these guys? Well, they got a good old line, and they got Tom Brady. Right? Aaron Rodgers puts wide receivers on the map. I don't think Devontae Adams would be having a breakout season if Blake Bortles were his quarterback. All right? You can find wide receivers elsewhere. You really can. I tell you, Des Bryant is good trading material this offseason, and I think it would be very smart for Dallas to at least put him on the trade block and... You know, he's also got a bit of an ego. He can be a pain in the ass in the clubhouse, especially when that team is losing. I, it, It's doubtful they're going to play as well next regular season as they are uh, this regular season. 14-2 is a tough record to match up match up with, uh, especially when you consider that Dallas will likely have a more difficult schedule next year since they finished first in the NFC East. I'm telling you, see what you can get for Des Bryant trade Tony Romo, and suddenly you can put the pieces together, Dallas, to have one of the best defenses in the NFL. You still got Zeke, you still got Dak Prescott, and the best old line in the NFL. I'd be very optimistic if I were a Cowboys fan. The future looks great. If there's any silver lining and looking at that uh, out in the divisional round to Green Bay, it's that the future for Dallas looks great. You don't have to pay much for your quarterback quite yet. And you still got Ezekiel Elliott, you still got that online, and you still got a lot of great receivers. Trade Romo, trade Des Bryant, get some draft picks, maybe bring in a few great defensive players, and that could be enough to turn the Cowboys into a one-round-and-out team to a Super Bowl champion. I'll be previewing the NFC Championship game uh, tomorrow. Uh, tune in. I'll be previewing the AFC Championship game, New England-Pittsburgh. Uh, but first, it's probably a more intriguing matchup than the uh, Patriots-Steelers, although we know the quarterback battle is going to be interesting. Uh, the Packers and the Falcons are more similar than they are different. You have two high-powered offenses. Uh, two great offensive lines. Pro Football Focus ranked the Green Bay Packers offensive line as fifth overall. They ranked the Falcons at sixth overall. And uh, we obviously know what Aaron Rodgers has done these last few weeks. And then uh, there's Matt Ryan, who's having a breakout season. And then there's uh, both have 
middle-of-the-pack defenses, although I would certainly give the Atlanta Falcons the edge in, uh, in their defense, uh, especially when considering how much Atlanta's defense has improved and the injury issues Green Bay is having defensively. I mean, what, what the Packers are doing is incredible because they're just not that great of a team defensively. Uh, so Aaron Rodgers is really, really picking up the slack there. Uh, but, like, everyone's talking about Aaron Rodgers, deservingly so. But if you look at the last five games, Matt Ryan has been a better quarterback than Aaron Rodgers. Let me just give you some statistics here. Points per game. These are the last five games, and we know how hot Rodgers has been in the last five weeks. Last five games for Aaron Rodgers. Points per game, 34.2. Matt Ryan, 38 points per game. Completion percentage, Aaron Rodgers, 66.5%. Matt Ryan, 74.5%. Aaron Rodgers' last five games, 14 touchdowns, one interception. Matt Ryan, 14 touchdowns, no interceptions. Yards per attempt. Aaron Rodgers, 8.5 yards per attempt. Matt Ryan, 9.4 yards per attempt. Passer rating. Aaron Rodgers, 115 passer rating. Matt Ryan, 133. Okay, so if we're going off past history here, we know the Falcons generally have not been a great playoff team. But this is not your grandfather's Atlanta Falcons. This is a different team, and they have been flying under the radar all season long. To the baseball fans out there, remember the Cleveland Indians going into the postseason. Nobody talked about the Cleveland Indians. What happened? They swept the Red Sox in the first round. Everyone was picking the Red Sox to go to the World Series. They, that bullpen punished Boston. And they lost three straight in the World Series, but they were so close to eliminating the Chicago Cubs and actually winning the World Series. The Atlanta Falcons are the Cleveland Indians of the NFL this season. I really believe that. And I'm not look, I'm not saying Matt Ryan is a better quarterback than Aaron Rodgers. But Atlanta is a slightly better team than Green Bay in most categories. They're also a slightly better team than Dallas in most categories, who Green Bay squeaked by last week. All right, let's talk about the running back position. Atlanta obviously has an advantage there. Uh, we all knew Devontae Freeman was great after last season. He's been great this season, but they added another piece, Tevin Coleman. He's having a breakout year. That's a big two-headed monster. Certainly can't match up with Green Bay's running game. They have a wide receiver... Ty Montgomery, who's done a great job, don't get me wrong, he's done a great job, but he's not the running back that Devontae Freeman or Tevin Coleman are. Maybe give, maybe give him a year, let him change his number to 32 or whatever. Montgomery could be a great running back, but then you look who's behind him, Christine Michael, they got their fullback, uh, what's his name, Aaron Ripkowski. They can't match up. And, uh, look, I know Atlanta's defense is nothing to brag about, and Green Bay certainly isn't, especially right now. But Atlanta's defense finished 6 overall in points allowed. And they have a pretty solid pass rush. Now, don't too read... They got to the quarterback often against Seattle in the uh, divisional round. But don't read too much into that because Seattle's offensive line is the youngest and lowest paid in the NFL. Not very good. Now, uh, Atlanta did lose uh, their de defensive lineman, Adrian Claiborne. But Vic Beasley is arguably the best pass rusher in the NFC. He really is. And he's capable of getting to the quarterback even with Aaron Rodgers and his ability to escape the pocket and throw on the run. I don't, I don't expect Atlanta to blitz. Blitzing doesn't work against Green Bay very well because of Rodgers' ability to extend plays. But I wouldn't be surprised if Atlanta, especially with Beasley... They hit Rodgers time and time and again. There might be a few roughing the passer calls. That's the way to beat a great quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. you got to get in his head a little bit, even if he is getting rid of the football. Now, Atlanta's defense is young. 
but they've gotten a lot better. Their coaching staff is almost entirely defensive-minded. Dan Quinn has done an excellent job helping that defense. They went from a cover three to a base nickel defense. They converted midway through the seasons. That's worked very well with a lot of their young, quick defensive players. And, of course, Atlanta delegates most of their offensive duties to Kyle Shanahan, uh, who I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, we know what Shanahan has done with that offense and all of their weapons. Now, of course, Green Bay is not a bad defense at stopping the run. They're really not. Their linebackers are actually pretty good. They're pretty good at run defense. But they're on their third, their fourth, and their fifth string defensive backs at this point. Green Bay suffers another injury at safety or cornerback. They're screwed. All right? Atlanta's receivers also have the advantage on Green Bay's. Packers don't have Jordy Nelson. And look, everyone talks about Julio Jones and how great he is. And and they should. He may be the best wide receiver in the game. I think uh, I'd give Beckham the advantage in terms of talent. But you can't get in Julio's head. He's consistent every single week. But part of the reason Julio Jones is having such a great season is because he plays along two other great wide receivers. Taylor Gabriel, Muhammad Sanu. You double-team Julio, Gabriel, and Sanu will eat you up. And the way Green Bay matches up at their, with their defensive backs, the wide receivers from Atlanta should have a great game on Sunday. Now, if Green Bay wins, I'm not saying they can't. If they win, it will be because of Aaron Rodgers. He's made up for that defense all season long, or at least in the second half of the season after uh, Packers got off to a, what was a 4-6 and six start, something like that. Uh, but historically, teams with great defenses do not, I mean, teams with weak defenses do not make the Super Bowl. And Atlanta's defense is at least competent. In fact, I would argue that Atlanta is one great pass rusher away from being an elite Denver Broncos style defense. They're young, they're getting better. They're also playing their last game ever at uh, the Georgia Dome. So. We know they don't have the most passionate fan base in the world, but it's an underrated fan base. They just don't get a ton of national media attention, and they're going to be loud in the Georgia Dome. My prediction is Atlanta will win in a shootout 38-35. to But again, if Green Bay wins, it will be because of Aaron Rodgers. But Atlanta is slightly better than Green Bay is at nearly every position except for maybe quarterback, and Matt Ryan's having a great year. We know what Kyle Shanahan is. He's a brilliant mind as their offensive coordinator. Atlanta's defense isn't great, neither is Green Bay's, but at least Atlanta's is competent, and they have a pass rush. I don't expect them to blitz, but they, sh- they certainly are capable of getting to the quarterback a bit, and they're going to hit Aaron Rodgers a lot. Again, there's going to be a few roughing the passer penalties. That's my prediction. 38 to 35 Atlanta in another shootout. So uh, th- this story has developed a lot in the last uh, 48 hours or so. Uh, it sounds like uh, Falcons offensive cor- coordinator Kyle Shanahan, whom you just heard me raving about in my uh, NFC Championship preview, it sounds like he will accept the 49ers head coaching job, the job that nobody wanted. I mean, Josh McDaniels uh, interviewed with the team, but... Uh, Josh McDaniels, he's the offensive coordinator of the Patriots. Uh, I think Shanahan's resume is far more impressive than Josh McDaniels. Not to take anything away from McDaniels, I'm a Patriots fan, but we know he's been working with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, and uh, he's probably making the smart decision. Either McDaniels will wait it out in New England and wait for Belichick to retire, although I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. I think really McDaniels wants to work with a good quarterback, and uh, obviously <laughs> it's slim pickings in San Francisco right now. 
Uh, I wouldn't dismiss Colin Kaepernick completely. I think there's some personal issues going on there, but I still think he could potentially be a great quarterback. Uh, but McDaniels really wants to wait on a potential job vacancy, I think, in Indianapolis or Tennessee. If either of those teams underperform next season, I wouldn't be surprised if Indy uh, fires Pagano and Tennessee isn't really raving about their head coach either. So, uh, you know, I, I if McDaniels has the chance to work with Andrew Luck or to work with Marcus Mariota, he'll jump on that. But a lot of coaches have been told to stay away from San Francisco, but it sounds like right now Kyle Shanahan is likely to accept the 49ers uh, job. And I think it's crazy that the Rams, the Chargers, and the Broncos passed up on Shanahan. They didn't want to pay the money, but he is arguably the most brilliant offensive mind in the NFL, and I think we'll probably see it on Sunday uh, with the, the Falcons. I think they're the Cleveland Indians of the NFL this season. I think there's, they have a real legitimate shot. I'm picking them to win the NFC Championship over the Packers in a shootout. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with their offensive coordinator, Kyle Shanahan. Now, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Shanahan, if you ever heard of him. Houston Texans haven't had a good offense in half a decade. The last time their offense was good, head coach Gary Kubiak was there. Their offensive coordinator, Kyle Shanahan. Then what happened? He went to the Washington Redskins. Robert Griffin III won Rookie of the Year. And then uh, Shanahan helped build that Redskins offense into what it is now. I guess Kyle Shanahan and his dad Mike Shanahan, head coach at the time, they're the ones who really get credit in bringing in Kirk Cousins when everyone said RG3 is their franchise quarterback. How did that work out? Well, I think we know how it worked out. And now everyone is saying Kirk Cousins deserves to be paid like an elite quarterback, and he probably will this offseason. Then he went to Cleveland. Cleveland Browns, with their offensive coordinator, Kyle Shanahan, 7-9 and nine record. Now, I know, 7-9 and nine record isn't great, but how have the Cleveland Browns done every season before and after that? Not as well as 7-9. and nine. Again, Kyle Shanahan's doing. And then he went to Atlanta, and what does he have? He has the highest point total in the NFL. Nearly outscored the New England Patriots by 100 points. Kyle Shanahan's offense. And Matt Ryan is playing at another level this season. So, somehow San Francisco just stumbled into hiring the best NFL coaching candidate because the Rams wanted to get their young mind, uh, Sean McVay, a 30-year-old to coach the team because everyone wants the young guy. San Diego, they picked some guy from Buffalo who didn't even play well. And then Denver, they picked a defensive-minded coach. So, yeah. The Niners somehow got Kyle Shanahan. It's incredible. And, uh, you know, this is the team that ran out Jim Harbaugh, who I guarantee owner Jed York regrets that. And then they fired Jim Tomsula, a local hire, after one year. And then we know what happened with Chip Kelly. I thought they were going to give Kelly at least another season. They didn't do that. So they're still paying off Tom Sula and Chip Kelly multi-million dollar contracts that only worked out for one season. So please, Jed York, be patient with Kyle Shanahan. This isn't a clean slate in San Francisco. It is a real mess. Niners need to improve at nearly every position. Their best offensive player is Carlos Hyde, their running back, who's not exactly a power back, and he gets hurt all the time. Pro Football Focus ranks their offensive line 28th in the NFL, and their defense finished 32nd, dead last in yards per game and points allowed. Now, Shanahan needs to bring in a good defensive mind to be successful in San Francisco. I don't think Jim O'Neill, after one season, is cutting it. He'll probably need to be let go. But here's something you need to know. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, Shanahan, when he was in Cleveland in 2014, actually worked with Jim O'Neill. So, with that in mind, maybe they'll stay. Now, San Francisco's defense, they lost their linebacker Bowman, defensive end uh, Armstead, and uh, Eric Reed. Their safety, that certainly didn't help. But even with all those players in there, I guarantee San Francisco would would have still been a bottom four defense. Uh, 
but they got lucky. Shanahan, if this this report is true, and there's been a bunch of different reports that make it sound like Shanahan will be the guy, then, wow, the Niners got lucky. And I don't really understand why NFL teams don't wait until the end of the postseason to hire head coaches. I don't even. I think there should be a league rule that they shouldn't, uh, because teams end up rushing these hires. And uh, I think part of the reason the Niners haven't made an official announcement on Kyle Shanahan is because we're waiting to see what happens with Atlanta. If they get eliminated on Sunday, I would expect that announcement to be made right away. Uh, But that's it for today's podcast. I'll be back tomorrow previewing the AFC Championship game between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. Uh, I think you can get an idea of who I'm going to pick to win that game. Uh, But they're matchup-wise... It's intriguing, and there's a lot of things that we don't really fully think about going into this because we're all we're all busy focusing on the quarterback matchup between Tom Brady and Big Ben. But football obviously goes beyond the quarterback position. Uh, but it should be great. And the uh, conference championship is you got two great quarterbacks on the other end. You couldn't ask for anything better. Again, I think the Atlanta Falcons are the Cleveland Indians of the NFL this season. I would expect them to be able to handle Green Bay in a shootout, but we all know what Aaron Rodgers has done. Uh, That's it. I'll be back tomorrow. Until then, I bid you adieu.